is Psycho Pirate the true power behind Arkham Tower, or is the truth much darker and crazier than anyone could possibly imagine? Well, let's hop into the pages of Detective Comics. Number 1051 and find out together, shall we? So then, as we crack open with this newest issue, we actually jump several months back in time to see how Psycho Pirate found his way back to Gotham City. It seems that after his adventures out in space with Darkseid and being one of his brand new Black Lanterns over an infinite frontier, Roger found himself returned to Earth and back to his same old self. Of course, he was horribly paranoid that what he had done would no doubt come to bite him in the ass and either Justice League Incarnate or Darkseid would come a-callin'. So, what did he do? He stowed away on his plane using his powers to make sure no one found him before eventually crashing on the couch of his childhood friend, Dr. Tobias Ware. Yeah, apparently these two go way back, actually, and once Ware found out that his super-powered buddy was back in town, he knew that he could use him to pull off the greatest con of his life. That con, of course, turned out to be Arkham Tower. Dr. Ware would make it seem like they were changing lives with cutting-edge treatment and drugs, but in reality, it was just the Psycho Pirate using his powers to control people's emotions to retard their more violent psychopathic tendencies, while also using his connections with the Party Crashers gang to flood the streets of Gotham with highly powerful new narcotics called Numb, which begs the question, if Psycho Pirate is keeping all the inmates in line, where does the Numb come from? As we learned from Oracle, Numb sales are at an all-time high. It's more powerful and more potent than ever, and they are awash in overdoses right now. They figure the only way they're going to be able to get on top of this is if Nightwing is able to get a bug inside the computer systems of Arkham Tower. Ultimately, the Bat family hopes to discover where and how exactly Dr. Ware is making off with the drugs and putting them into the hands of the party crashers. Now, as the reader, we discover that Ware is actually holding meetings with the party crashers deep underground in Gotham's old city, which I forget exists sometimes. It's also in this issue we begin to realize just how desperate but also very greedy Ware is. You see, he's double dipping on the party crashers right now, only giving them half the promised drugs and filling out the rest with placebos. Why would he risk his life like that? Well, apparently he's now selling to the Penguin as well, trying to double his money. Unfortunately, now he has the Crashers and Penguin pissed at him for trying to short them. Both gangs demand to be fully reimbursed, but Ware hopes that he can be done with this scam and out of Gotham soon enough. All he needs to do is convince Dr. Meridian to OK Mayor Nakano to release more funds. Of course, she doesn't want to do that right now because she believes Dr. Ware is fully corrupt, and once again, she is denied the chance to see the mysterious Dr. Ocean who is making and handing out the new drugs. We're also reminded that Mayor Nakano is holding out hope that Arkham Tower can help his wife with her own psychological issues right now, and honestly, this is the saddest and most sympathetic he's been in a bit. I also feel really dumb for not putting this together, but Dr. Ocean's office is where Psycho Pirate has currently set up right now. Get it? Pirate of the Ocean. Duh. Using his power in such a wide-reaching way is actually really starting to take its toll on poor Psycho Pirate. He says that there's so many minds, so many emotions he needs to weave. It feels like he might crack under the pressure any day now, and Ware just can't let that happen. They're so close now to getting their money and running, he just has to hold it together. Which, obviously, because we've already glimpsed the future, we know doesn't end up happening. Here's the thing, though. Apparently, Psycho Pirate lost control once before. The inmates were free from his hold. And a giant riot soon broke out, one that poor Nightwing got himself caught in the middle of after tampering with the tower's computer system. Anna Volson actually made a straight beeline for Nightwing, apparently recognized him out of the costume. Maybe she can smell him in the same way she smelled Kate Kane a couple issues ago? Hell, even Helena Bertinelli got back into the swing of things, defending Dr. Meridian from a murderous Nero who wanted to kill her. In fact, he called her the Dream Stealer, which is actually a really interesting accusation especially as we see more in this issue of inmates talking about their lives as if they were only movies that they were watching. I get a feeling that that's going to be important later. After getting slapped around by Ware for a little bit, Psycho Pirate is finally able to take control of the hospital again. He puts everyone to sleep and then forces their minds to forget everything that happened. But oh, as the comic comes to an end, we all know this is just a band-aid on a much bigger problem. And so that was Detective Comics number 1051, everybody. And I gotta say, I really like this one. This might actually be my favorite issue of the series so far. I absolutely love how Psycho Pirate is being used in this story. He's not some grand mastermind with a great plan to take over the world. He's some poor, in-over-his-head schmuck going along with his con man buddy. They don't want to rule. They don't want revenge. They don't even want to mess
mess with the heroes. They just want to make a quick buck and be done with it all. But unfortunately, they've stretched themselves way too thin, and now they've lit the match on a powder keg without even knowing it. It's even more darkly hilarious, too, because we know Ware doesn't even live long enough to see where all of his machinations take the hospital and the people who reside there because they throw him out a window first thing when shit gets bad. Again, I also can't help but be reminded of the events of Heroes in Crisis, yet another story about heroes battling with mental illness where it was implied the psycho pirate would be a part of the story, but he never was. I guess in a way, Mariko Tamaki's Shadows of the Bat is the Heroes in Crisis story I always wanted to read. Overall, I would give this one an 8 out of 10. I love the whole twisted caper nature of this all. I love the house of cards that we've seen built, and I can't wait to see it all fall down. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.